by my house there was this road and I remember thinking this depression didn't go away. Uh, if I really just wanted to off myself, I could hit this bump in the road and there's a pull off to the right side and it, it'd be over. My story starts in 2006 uh, after running and gunning for a few years with my brother using heroin, cocaine. I didn't like who I was or who I was becoming. And I think there was a way back. I remember my brother and I were living in a basement. We were craving like crazy. You know, it had been probably 48 hours since we'd used and it got to the point where I felt that I needed to use as much as I needed to breathe. You know, one of our dealers uh, told us that you could steal 509s or 509s of Levi's and trade them to the Mexican Mafia for heroin balloons. I was really scared, and I think I was more scared for my brother's life than I was for my own. Battling addiction, you, know, you typically don't do it alone. You're with a lot of friends, and um, after a period of time, you're going to lose a friend or two or three or four. And You know, my rock bottom was fear. One day we, we come home, and I didn't know really what was going on. We're sitting around as a family. They said, we want to talk about this drug problem. You know, they went around and started talking about how they wanted us to stop. And I remember, you know, lying. What really touched me is my littlest brother, Jaron. I could tell he didn't quite understand what was going on. And he looked at me and says, I just want my brother back. And uh, that was the beginning of a, of a turning point for me. So I remember sitting there in rehab and I remember seeing these guys who had some sobriety and they seemed to be happy and I, and I wasn't happy inside. You know, I had a lot of shame. I felt I, I wasn't deserving of God's love. And when they started talking about step two, uh, that my spiritual health could be restored, uh, that was fascinating to me. I had to know, and particularly I had to know if, if I could be forgiven. Because I was convinced that if, if I didn't get an answer, <laughs> that there was really no hope. Why, why be here, you know? <laughs> so that night, as I got on my knees, I didn't even get a word out. I couldn't even get a word out because I had an overwhelming, an overwhelming sense of love. That, that feeling lasted for, it seemed like 10 minutes. I just sat there in awe just feeling this power, this overwhelming sense of peace that I never felt in my entire life. And that was the beginning of my recovery. That's when I knew that, okay, all right, he's there. He's, he's there.